All right, you guys, this is Mr. Sal. Uh, of course, I'm gone for the day, so uh, what's up? This is a good time to have the classworks passed out. At the end of the lesson, you'll pass out the homeworks. You can have the TAs do that. Uh, thanks for teaching my class as well. I appreciate it. Uh, you guys, we're not going to correct the homework today because, well, I'm gone, so uh, we'll correct that next time, or you can look on Canvas and find the answer keys yourself and correct them. That is up to you, but uh, in the meantime, let's go and give this TA some time to pass out the classworks. All right, take a moment and read through this first problem. Uh, you'll want to read through uh, parts A through D as well. So we have this table. Below it shows two coordinate pairs, X and Y, that satisfy the equation Y equals MX plus B for some numbers M and B. Now, on part A, it gave us a slope of 7. And what we need to do is find possible values of y1 and y2 that would work if the slope was 7. So go ahead and take a moment and figure out how you would do that. All right, since the slope is 7, uh, when we look at the rate of change, all of these should be proportional with the slope, which is really just 7 over 1. So in other words, the change in x, which is the run, that's our denominator. In this case, is plus 3. So we have this x here that we need to solve for in this proportion. And you can use whatever method you want. Some of you would just see that, well, we're going to use some scale factors. 1 times 3 is 3, so 7 times 3 is 21, which means the change between these two needs to be 21. What this means is that as you choose values of y1 and y2, let's say that y1 was 0, then you'd have to add 21 to it to get y2, which would then be <clears throat> now you didn't have to choose these specific values uh, maybe you chose some other values maybe like 10 well again you're gonna add 21 to 10 which would make this 31 now instead so as long as those two values are 21 units apart then we're in good shape there so you may want to check that right now and make sure that they are 21 apart and again, that's because the slope is going to be the same always for these linear type equations. Now, something good for you guys to know is that in ninth grade, not all of these equations are going to be linear. So the rate of change is not always going to be proportional. Now, in making uh, that second pair, uh, and again, you could have used any values that are 21 units away. We've also answered part B. So let's look at part C. Use the same x values in the tables to find possible values for y1 and y2 if m equals 3. So now instead of having a slope of 7, again this will still be proportional. We're going to have a slope of 3, so our run is still 3. And we're comparing this to the slope that was given to us, which is 3 over 1. Now don't be confused, that's not the same 3, right? This 3 right here is a run. So we're going to make this proportional to 3 over 1, 
where our run from the two numbers 2 to 5 is 3. So we need to make this proportional. Once again, we can see that our rise would be 9. So in other words, y1 and y2 have to be 9 units away from each other. So it doesn't matter, again, what values you choose, uh, whether you start with y1 or y2. Let's look. Let's say that I chose a negative 5 for y1. Not that I suppose any of you chose negative 5, but just to illustrate... Uh, I would have to add 9 to that to get the y2 value, which would then be 4. Now, I didn't have to use those values, though, right? Maybe some of you, again, start with 0, and then you would add 9 to that to get 9. But once again, you didn't need to use those values. I'll just do one more set. Maybe you chose something slightly random, like uh, 48. Well, again, we'd have to add 9 to that to get 57. So those would be possible values to use. Again, any values that are 9 away. I apologize. I said I was going to do only one more. I'm going to do another one. What I'm going to do is start with Y2. Uh, but this way we'd have to work backwards, though, right? So if I started with something like uh, something random, 76, right? I would have to go 9 back this way in order to figure out what number it was started with. And it looks like that would be 67. Again, if we went back this way, we would have added 9. So that's what makes this work. All right, that was also answering part D on that worksheet. So let's take a look at number two. Each of the three tables below shows two coordinate pairs, x and y, that satisfy the equation y equals mx plus b, which is slope-intercept form for a straight line. For some numbers, m and b, if m equals 3 in each case, find possible values for y1 and y2 for each pair of x values given. All right, let's take care of that. All right, let's go and start with this one. On your paper, it may say C, but we're going to call that A. And go ahead and find two values for Y1 and Y2 that would work with a slope of 3. All right, so once again, we're just looking for a proportional relationship where the slope is 3 over 1. Uh, again, the reason why we show this as in fraction is so that we can see uh, the rise and run between these two. And this one has a run of 5, so this should equal something over 5. And again, these are proportional, so they're equivalent fractions. So if you see, we would just use... 
scale factor, so 1 times 5 is 5, so 3 times 5 is 15. That means that these two numbers need to be 15 units apart. So, but it doesn't matter what values we choose. We just should start with something and then end with something. So, uh, again, if you start with 0, which would be a pretty easy choice, you'd end with 15. On the other hand, because we should be choosing a second set of numbers here to use, uh, once again, it doesn't matter what you choose. I'm going to choose a negative just to illustrate this. Then we'll do a positive value as well. If I chose negative 50, I would add 15 to that. Again, that's just because where we're starting, and then by the time you ended, you would be at negative 35. But let's look at some positive values, because most people don't choose willingly negative values. Let's choose something like 12. If you chose 12, then maybe you ended with 27. And these would give us uh, accurate values of a line with the slope 3 that goes through these two points. All right, now would be a good mo uh, time to start with B as well. So I'll take a moment and see if you can find two values of Y1 and Y2 that would be points on the line with the slope of 3. All right, so once again, we are looking at the slope here, which is 3, so we'd have 3 over 1, and this has a change of 11, so it will be proportional with a run of 11. We've just got to solve for the rise here, and you can use fishy method, cross multiplication, bow tie method, means and extremes, whatever method you choose, doesn't matter, you should find that the change would be 33 in the rise. So the difference between these two needs to be 33 units. Uh, whatever we start with, we're just going to add 33 to get the y2. So once again, I'm going to start with 0 because 0 is a very nice number to work with. 0 plus 33 would give us, well, 33. Pretty simple, right? Let's try some negative values. Something like a negative 10. Well, if I added 33 to negative 10, that would give me 23. And that would be a second set that works. Uh, by the way, and I should have clarified this before, but here we go. Uh, this is a coordinate pair here, right? 2, negative 10. And this would be 13, 23. That would be on the line. If you were to graph these, you'd just put a line, straight line through the two points, and you'd have the line that we really want. Uh, uh, the only reason I bring that up is because I have been working with the y values specifically, but we're really looking at coordinate or ordered pairs, so just keep that in mind.
All right, go ahead and give Part C here a, a shot. And then we'll look at some values that would work for this one as well. All right, this one I'm not going to go over in great detail, uh, but I will show you guys how to find that change in the Y's. So again, we're looking at a change in 15 here. So since it's proportional, this should be a change of 45. So whatever you start with, such as 0, you would add 45 to it, and that would be one answer. Another one, perhaps, would be something like negative, I don't know, 17. So uh, looks like that would give us a positive 28. And these are just random values that I'm choosing here. Maybe you chose something different, and that's okay. They just need to be 45 units apart. So let's start with something else, uh, something more positive, perhaps, like, uh, I don't know, 55. Plus 45 would give us 100 right here. So you didn't have to choose these values, but uh, those are the ones that I used. All right, number three, suppose we take all six values from the three tables above. Can you find six corresponding y values so that all the coordinate pairs satisfy the same equation? If m equals three, fill out the table below and explain how you know they will all work with the same equation. So once again, we're focusing on the proportionality of the slope to the, to the rate of change of these numbers. So take a moment, give you guys a few minutes to do this one. So... Take your time. If you need help, turn to a neighbor. But uh, don't talk about other stuff than math, all right, you jerks. For the sake of the sub, do your stinking math, all right?
All right, I'm not going to find the values for you on this one exactly, <clears throat> but what we can do is, since we know the slope is 3 on this one, uh, we can, again, just make all our proportions and find the necessary differences in the y values. So it all really depends on what value you start with, and it doesn't really matter where you start. Okay, so I would recommend just starting here uh, with that value of y, and then finding the difference and the changes in the x's and finding the corresponding changes in y's. All of these are going to be proportional, though. So this is really all the information we need. We know the slope is 3 over 1. And 3 is our rise, 1 is our run. So we can see all the changes in x's, right? Those are all going to be our runs. Um, not the runs, you guys, okay? So easy on that. So let's look. Uh, we are going to need several different fractions here, possibly even more than that, but let's see. And just look at the changes in x. So from 4 to 9 was up 5, so we can put that here in this one. The second change from 9 to 2 was down 7, so I should say to the left 7, sorry. From 2 to 3 is to the right 11, so we can put that there. From 13 to negative 1 is to the left, 14. And we will need one more space there. So, from 1 to 14 is to the right, 15, or a run of 15 to the right. So, all we're going to do is solve these. Uh, these all need to equal 3 when they're simplified. So, 15 over 5 would be 3 over 1. Negative 21 over negative 7 would be, again, this is a positive 3 here. So this is a 33. And uh, negative 14, that would be negative 42. And 15, that would be 45. So these are the just the changes. These values don't go inside the table, but rather they're just changes of the values inside the table. So I can write that all in there. So there are the changes. Now again, I guess I wasn't going to spell the table. Uh, you should. Uh, I would just recommend starting with zero because then we can find all the other values based on that number and we're just adding and subtracting from there. So that's how you should fill out the table. Um, again, you don't have to start with zero. You can start with whatever number you want. And these numbers are all relative to each other, okay? And that's why all this works this way, because we were moving specifically from each value to each value. So 15 divided by 5 is 3. Negative 21 divided by negative 7 is 3. 33 divided by 11 is 3, and so forth. But again, the choice is yours as to which values you use. The changes just need to be in this manner. All right, go ahead and finish this uh, part of the worksheet. You'll have to graph each equation, then write the letter to the point that the line intersects in the spot or spots for the question number, whatever. So uh, go ahead and do this one. Once you're finished, uh, let the sub or the TAs know when they can get you the homework, all right? But finish this first, and then you can have the homework. If you need help, you guys can work in groups. So as long as you guys keep the noise levels down and behave, I'm going to leave that up to the sub. So if you guys have been mean to the sub, don't expect any mercy from them, all right? And if you have been mean to the sub, they're going to let me know, and you should not expect any mercy from me either. So be nice and behave yourselves. I will be back hopefully next time once I feel better. So we'll see you guys later.